right, it's back by that other one. Welcome back to the channel. We are starting on a very cool project today. Yeah, it's springtime. Things are warming up. I think it's like 40 degrees right now. So it's a perfect time to do projects on our cabin. And we got, a, like Errol said, we got a big one planned. We're going to be doing siding on the whole entire cabin. It may be a small cabin, but it is still a big project. And it's actually something Eric and I have wanted to do for a few years now. Since we moved here, we yep. knew the cabin was unfinished. It's not painted. We just have the T... T11 siding on there right now. Which is siding and it may look finished, but it is not finished, not only because it's not painted, but there was never house wrap installed, so. Yeah, the, basically the way this cabin was built is this T11 siding was put directly on the studs. So there's no sheathing underneath there. Like Errol said, there's no house wrap. There is just this T11 siding on there. So we're gonna take it as an opportunity to do it the right way this time around and our house will be officially complete after that, right? Yep, there's a lot of steps going into this project. It's probably gonna take us a couple weeks, I think, but let's get going on it. We're gonna walk you around the cabin and show you what we're working with. Hey, that was my coffee. The front of our cabin is the part that is 16 feet wide and the peak up top, I believe is about 18 feet. So we're gonna be working up pretty high. We do have two sets of scaffolding that we're gonna be using for this project to get up into those corner spots up there. Hopefully I'll make it a little easier for us. We've already got the deck cleaned off. So this front section is pretty much ready to go. And over here on the side, this side should be pretty easy. We just have one window on this side. This one only goes up to 12 feet. And this is the 20 foot wide section that we're gonna be working with over here. These windows, when they were put in, they didn't have any caulking around the window. So I think it was last year, the year before, we pulled off all the trim. We caulked around the windows. We were getting a lot of drafts inside the house like cold air coming in when it was really cold outside. So that helped a lot, but I think doing this house wrap on the house, caulking everything and redoing the siding the correct way is gonna really help us out, especially in the winter time. This is our battery box. We have a solar system. This is where we keep our batteries. It's not gonna be in the way, I don't think so. We'll just have to take the lid off. Here is where we first put our wires through the house inside to our inverter. We're gonna clean things up there, do it a little bit differently. And on the back side of the house, our shower. The shower is pretty much frozen in the ground. At least the little cinder blocks are. We could probably move it off if we have to, but I'm hoping we could just take off the roof of it and this little shelf, and hopefully we can get in here and get the trim off and get the house wrap on behind it. And on the back of the house, should be pretty simple. This is a taller section again. We have one little window up there, and then we have our drain for our sink that we're gonna have to cut out. And over here on the corner house is a good example of a lot of the gaps we're dealing with. When we bought this little cabin, nothing had caulking on it. So I filled in this one a little bit, but I didn't get up all the way, and there's just a lot of caulking to do on this house. And speaking of caulking, that is what I am gonna get started on. We bought a bunch of caulking, and I'm gonna go over the whole entire cabin, and we're just gonna try to fill as many gaps and put caulking where there should be caulking. And Ariel is gonna get started on removing all of the trim from our windows. Oh no, I got it, I got it. Wow, they're wedged in there, huh? Wow. This side of the house is really straightforward. We just have one window, so there's not a lot going on over here. This is a really great time, like Eric was mentioning, to do this project because spring breakup has started, so we are getting the melting. And generally in spring, we do not get that much precipitation. We can get snow, but we're definitely not gonna get rain. And in fact, the roof is just dripping on me right now, but we have this warm week of weather coming up, and I'm pretty sure that the rest of the snow is going to be melted off. So again, just great timing for this project. Since it's so cold out, we had to get the special kind of caulking. It was a little more expensive, but it's supposed to be really good stuff. And this dries, or you can apply it, anywhere from zero degrees to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a big range. It is still getting well below freezing at night. I think we got down to like 20 degrees. So this should have no problem drying for us. Man, you use a lot of this caulking with these big gaps. Well, good thing you got like a million extra, right? Yeah. Thank you. 
trying to go straight down. Huh? You want to just put it on the snow? Can I back up behind me on the snow and just set it on the snow? Sure. Okay. Wait. You gotta wait a second. Okay. I wish there wasn't a window. Danger zone. How's right it now. working? You got, you got them all? I need a tool belt. I'm impressed with that uh, stuff. It worked really well. I see what you're saying. I need that other. <laughs> There's a gold one. Did you ever, did you ever cock that? That's mine. Yeah, this was not cocked. We got the trim off the door, and we've noticed a lot of drafts coming from the front door area. We have a cat door, so that doesn't help. But we noticed some from around the edges coming in through the outlet, and there's some pretty big gaps in there. So I think what we're gonna do is use this. Uh, a little foam insulation. We'll put a little foam insulation in there and hopefully that'll seal it up for us. Oh my gosh. No, it's a little, it's like a little brown mat. Oh. You see it on the other side? Oh my god. Thank you. You see how many of them are up here? Caulking is all done. Errol has all of the trim removed. We got it sitting here on the deck and we're waiting on the foam on the front door to dry. We're gonna remove our outlets. We have a plug here on the front, just an outdoor outlet. And then we have one on the back that's a, like a secondary generator hookup for the house. So we're gonna remove both of those. there at all huh <laughs> how did that how did you do that last time we put the caps on after the fact after the fact uh... okay we're unplugged is it coming These ones are pretty long, so. Okay, you're almost there. Keep going. Okay, good job. Okay. Yeah, let me know when. Keep pushing it through for me. Good job. Got it? Okay, is that good? Oh, that works really well, huh? Yeah. It's up. Clamping these down, you gotta clamp them. This should be hard. <laughs> Whew. 
okay, well, that took about three hours longer than we thought it was gonna take. It was actually really hard to run all our wires through that little tiny box. I probably should've got a box, a little junction box, one size bigger, but we got them through there. We got everything hooked back up. We got the little holes. We got some spray foam in those. Um, I'm gonna go inside and make sure everything works. And we should be good to go on that part. And hopefully we can still get some work done tonight. I know we wanted to get all of our sanding done, but it's getting kind of late and it's getting cold. So we'll see what we can get done. I believe it is close to 8 p.m. and it is time to do some sanding. first time using a orbital sander and it worked awesome definitely way easier than doing this by hand so for the trim around the windows we are just going to be reusing what was already there and it's this it's actually really pretty i think it's pine it's these one by fours and unfortunately it was coated already so we had to strip that because we're going to be painting the house so we couldn't really leave it just like that but it they're really nice and smooth and i think they're ready to be painted or primed we wanted to get all of them done today that's just not gonna happen. We're not moving at that quick of a pace. So this is going to be carrying over to tomorrow. Okay, we decided to make some changes to the trim. We took off the little corner pieces. So now we're just gonna be left with a nice square trim. I'm gonna bring the rest of these into Ariel in the house. She's warming them up. She's got a can of primer in there and she's gonna be priming all of our trim. The 
foam insulation that we did around the door turned out really good. When I went over it and it expanded, there were still some gaps. So Ariel, she went through again last night and got it really good. I trimmed it all this morning with a serrated steak knife and we put up some new trim. The cat, unfortunately, shredded the old trim and it wasn't very nice looking. So this trim is gonna match the windows and it's gonna be a nice square trim. It's gonna look just like that. And I'm gonna take these ones down and I'm gonna sand them up and we're gonna get these ones primed also. stripe runner get a little skunk hey what's your problem why are you so mean all the time I think two coats should do it what do you think you gonna do two coats I am yeah see how it's all bleeding through I don't want it to bleed through when we actually paint it with our polar bear white or this for white you know I was I thinking think, too, we're going to need to prime all the bare wood on the house too, before we paint it. Well, we almost finished this project today. Uh, we didn't even start on the house wrap. The plan was to have all of our trim painted by now but it's the end of the day and I do not have all of our trim painted, sadly. We didn't account for enough paint. We didn't account for enough time. We have a local hardware store that we ran to. Thankfully, they had the same primer that we're using, but unfortunately it has been frozen. So it is no good and we can't use this. They're closed now. We now have to make a much longer trip to the bigger town and that's gonna put us behind schedule even more. The reason I am being so persnickety with painting these bad boys is they are pine and they have these knots. You probably saw that already, but pine is notorious to kind of like be hard to cover up if you're doing light trim. So I am doing two coats of primer on this. And we are also priming because pine also is a little bit tricky to get your paint to stick to. So that is a really good bonding agent. So they look really good once they're finished. This one's not finished as you can tell, it still needs Still needs a lot more paint. Hopefully things go better tomorrow and the weather's good and we can actually start on our house wrap. There's one. And then do a ladder real quick? It's pretty tight over here, yeah. I'm gonna turn around going up and down. You get to go through and line it with how you want it. That thing works pretty good. I think so. If our house is only this tall, could you imagine how easy this would be, though? It'd be a lot easier if there's no ice on the ground. That is going to be a nightmare doing up top. You think I don't know that? I know. 
At least it's only gonna be a four foot section, you know what I mean? First layer of house wrap is up. We went with a nine foot section, so our roll is nine feet tall. We went around the house one time, 16 by 20 cabin. It took us about an hour to do. Yeah, it was a little bit harder than I guess we would have anticipated. And we know it's gonna be quite a bit harder to do the top, right? Yeah, it was really hard because of our ice. Uh, the water's melting off the roof, it's hitting the ground, it's still getting well below freezing at night. So we're sliding around in ice. We put our little cleats on. So hopefully this helps us a little bit. And the scaffolding should help too, I hope. Definitely. This is our first time doing house wrap, so we're definitely not experts by any means. We've been doing a lot of research on it, the subject, and I think I didn't really understand truly what house wrap was prior to this project. So house wrap, you see it a lot. This is the Tyvex, and the way it works is it's permeable on one side, but not the other. So you always want the writing facing out towards you, and what happens is moisture can actually leave your house through the wooden walls and come out, but it can't permeate so it can't go in the opposite direction that's kind of the whole purpose of it but another big thing about house wrap is the air barrier and so yep. that's one of our major reasons for using it because we do have that air seepage get a little bit of that cold air coming in that air exchange so we're losing some of our heat from our house this should be a really great thing for us since we don't have it and it's pretty straightforward there's just a few things that you have to do a certain way when you're installing it right definitely this whole project you want to do like shingling like a roof so if water does get on this you want it to shingle down. That's why we started on the bottom layer and we're gonna be working our way up. Like I said, it's a nine foot roll. We went once around the top section, obviously doesn't need nine feet. It's only about a four foot section. So we're gonna be cutting this roll now. We're gonna cut it to exactly the piece we need and then we're gonna do this top layer. That's what we're working on next. Let's go. Well, another round around the house. It's looking pretty good. We bought this stapler. I think it's called a hammer stapler. You just basically whack it and a staple comes out. I think that the best way to put this stuff up is they recommend using something called a cap stapler, which is like this, but it has a one inch like plastic disc on it. And that does a little better job holding this stuff up in the wind, but we couldn't find one up here. So we went with the stapler and it seems to be doing a pretty good job. I've been through a lot of staples so far. 
We're taking a break from the house wrap because we're both a little bit concerned about how we're gonna get that high to finish it. We're gonna do our windows and that's like a whole special procedure. You have to do those a certain way. Eric's been putting the staples about every 16 inches vertically and horizontally. You don't want them to be spaced too far apart. I think that sometimes the wind can kind of come and rip them out. Everything's overlapped like it should be. We did six inches. Actually, I think we did a little bit more. Six inches this way and then six inches also vertically as you're layering your house wrap up. So we're gonna get started on the window. Have you seen it? It's really cool. It's got a thing on it. This house wrap actually should have been put on before these windows were installed. That would have been the ideal way to put this in. You could have put some window flashing underneath it, but our windows are already in. We didn't have house wrap, so we're gonna do a little different. We cut out the window. Next, we're gonna put up window flashing, which is like a really sticky, almost like tar tape. And that's gonna go on both edges and the top for us. gonna go further so I'm about where I want to be how far past it are you about three inches past I got it in pretty good I'm just trying to think what goes the flashing goes on last no goes on now yeah I got it One window is officially done. So we got the flashing we put on the sides. We put the flashing on top and then we put a little drip rail up there. It's a metal window drip cover or a drip cap and we bent the sides over. So if water goes on that, it's gonna drip down the sides of the windows. And then we put the house wrap over the top of that, taped it with some Tyvex tape. And again, we're doing the shingling on this. So if water starts from up top, it's gonna constantly shingle down and go out the bottom. We got three more windows to do and a door. The door. Yeah. It's really hard to get that side cut so they can Good job. Good? Yeah, that's all you know. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. Here's about the rest.
back in there. Oh, I need a piece of tape. We finished the door and our windows. And I think we're going to be wrapping things up because there are little snow pellets coming down, which isn't surprising. And it's just a little chilly out here. So I think we're going to finish the rest tomorrow, but we do have to tape up our seams. We're going to run those horizontally and then vertically. <laughs> okay, line, line her up for me. I'll put it down. Those are the big screws. And then let's flip it. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. This is a really nice piece. You can also piece. one more time now. Yeah. That's it. How are you level on yours? We're getting the trim up. We got most of it up so far. This is the door. It's all done. When we sanded this uh, trim before we painted it, we sanded it with 150 grit sandpaper. And then before we actually paint this actual color, we're going to go over with another fine sandpaper on it. But it's looking good. It's got the side window to do over here. Yay! Well, we're moving right along with this project. It's coming together. Pretty happy with what we've accomplished these last few days. The back of the house, we still need to get the house wrap up in that really tall corner and we need to put the trim around that last window, but we just can't figure out a way right now to get up there with the ice on the ground. Our scaffold team, we don't have a good platform to put it and we don't have big enough ladders to get up there, but we are gonna take care of the front. We're gonna use the scaffolding on the deck. We still need to do the house wrap up there. And then I think the next step is heading back to town. We're gonna pick up all of our siding. You look like you're going up a little on the side. No, I got a second You okay? You holding it still? Yeah. 